What's up wizards? Today we're going to be looking at how you should name your types. Every time you create a type you're going to have to be thinking what do I name this? What rules do I use? I've got a bunch of little heuristics that I use when I'm naming types and I'm going to show you some optional stuff that you can maybe adopt if you want to. The first rule is never pluralize. Let's imagine that we've got a union type like this. We have three roots, user, admin user and admin. It feels natural because these are a collection of roots to name it roots. But let's imagine that we have a function called go to root. This root parameter here only ever represents represents one root. And so we've got this weird mismatch between the roots and the root. If you think about it, this union type up here only ever represents one root. Sure, these are a collection of different roots, but really it's only describing the possibility of a single root. So the correct way to name these is root, not roots. Let's imagine that we had to make an array of these roots. You can define it as root array like this. If this was written as roots array, it sort of reads okay, but it kind of indicates that maybe roots is itself an array. So naming everything as a singular is a lot cleaner. If you wanted to, you could turn roots into an array itself. And now roots represents an array of root. This I think is pretty clean too. So there you go. Rule number one, make sure everything is singular except for array types. And yes, in the King's English, it's pronounced root, not route, you heathens. Next up, always use a different case between your variables and your types. Let's go back to our go to root example. It is perfectly valid to rename this as lowercase because TypeScript understands that this root is on the runtime and this root is on the type level, it doesn't conflict. You can even declare a variable in the same scope as the root. But here you can see that the syntax highlighting starts getting confused. If we change this back to Pascal case, you can see that the syntax highlighting on the variable now looks correct. It works in reverse too. If I name this uppercase route, then it turns green. So where you can, you should use a different casing for your variables and your types. Let's look at generic type parameters now. Let's imagine that I've got this generic type called response. We have a data in T and we have an error, which is always an error. For simple types, types like this, I will generally keep this as a single letter T, but changing it to T data is also perfectly valid. In general, I'll always prefix it with a T because data doesn't look like a generic to me. So T or T data, both perfectly valid. One place I will never use T is if this contains multiple type arguments. This T U thing up here is actually a convention. You can keep going T U V, etc. But here it starts to look like pure maths instead of actual maintainable code. So what I prefer to do is rename this as T error and this one as as T data. This means that the signature of the type is a lot easier to read. You may want to be a bit stricter and force your team to give these more descriptive names. That's totally fine too. For me, as long as they're prefixed with T or they are T itself, then it's fine. But T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z can, you know, that can go to hell. This final one is one that I don't really recommend that you do. Let's imagine that we have two types here. We have a user type and an organization kind of interface here. In some places, I will see people add T user and I organization. This indicates that this is a type and this is an interface. I don't really see the point in this, especially not if you're using I and T here, it seems strange. Because if you eventually want to change this over to a type, then you'll also need to change the name and everywhere it's used. And I don't really see what benefit you're getting from seeing it as an interface from the name. I think this is another convention kind of carried over from the like the Java days. But personally, I don't see why it's still relevant. You can just hover over the name of the thing to figure out if it's an interface or a type anyway. So there you go, folks. Those are my rules for how to name your types. Keep things singular, use a different case from your variables, prefix fix type arguments with T and just, you know, be sensible. Hopefully you know that one already. You know. Thanks for watching, folks. I have a beginner's TypeScript tutorial that is free on TotalTypeScript.com. It is an absolute banger. It will take you through everything you need to know in order to get a job with TypeScript. So, you know, go and check it out. I'll have another video that you can watch here and a little face that you can subscribe to here. What did you think of this video? What rules did I miss? What do you do in your team that you think is a little bit weird? What do you want me to diagnose next? What should I make a video on next? Too many questions. Anyway, I'll see you very soon.